with uh, Anthony Diawara Tech, and we're going to show you how to pour uh, engine cylinders today on a quickway boarding model. First step is going to be to clean out your cylinders uh, a little bit. You want to obviously want to wash the block off. Um, after that, get a rag. Uh, so you're going to need to get the block set up so that it is level on the machine. So what we're going to do here is you'll take something like this, a level, and set it up so that the block is actually true and level. And also make sure that it's level on the bench as well. And as you can tell, it's not exactly level. So we need to make it as level as we can. For instance, we're about two bars right here. So when we put it on the block, it should be about the same, around two bars, which it is. So we know that the block is level with the machine. It doesn't need to be level with the ground, it just needs to be level with the machine. Um, after we clean it up and do all that, level it out, we need to measure the cylinders to see what the, uh, what the sizing is because when you're boring a block, what you're doing is you're taking very fine amounts of metal out of the cylinder um, to fit new pistons, new rings, um, and to create a better cylinder finish. So what we need to do is use something like this, like a dial bore gauge, and set it up to the right specifications for a block. And for this block, how many thousands are we going over? How many? All right, so for this block, we're going 20 thousandths over. And uh, so we need to set this gauge up for 20 thousandths over so that after we do our bore, we can make sure that it's accurate. so that this whole assembly is going to be free. And we're going to turn the float on so that now this whole assembly, <laughs> this whole assembly will be able to move around a lot easier. And after you clean all the cylinders out, clean all the cylinders out here, on top of the box, you clean all this up here as well. After everything's all cleaned up and you've done all your measuring, you're going to want to center more and more in the actual cylinder, just by eyeball. So we're going to leave the float on. We're going to take our lever here and we're going to slowly bring this down into the cylinder. Okay. And once we get it to just on the top of the cylinder, you can come in for this part. You want this to just barely be sitting inside the cylinder. Okay. Just, just very flush with the top of the cylinder. Once we get it set up, generally speaking, back up now, we're going to go up here and we're going to tighten this little armature back. What this is doing is, this is taking all three of these little arms around the cylinder and it's pushing them outward so that it centers it in the whole thing. So what we're doing here is we're just going to keep tightening it until I can get it as tight as I can. So that's as tight as I can get it right there. So all these are actually tightened in here. Once we do that, it's centered in the hole. So you're going to come over here. You're going to turn the float off and you're going to leave it off for a couple seconds. Let the boring bar settle down and then we'll turn the lock on so it locks it in place. Then we'll come back up here, we'll loosen the armature a couple turns, and then we'll back the bar out of the cylinder, and we'll get it just high enough to where we'll be able to stick this little telescoping gauge in there, and we'll check to make sure that it's actually within spec for boring. All right, so the next step, like I said, after we pull the boring bar back out of the cylinder, once we got it all centered, is to take this little gauge here, and we're gonna stick it in the cylinder bore, set it to zero, and we're gonna put it all the way around the cylinder to make sure it's actually centered. So this is gonna be a lot more accurate. So what we do is here, basically it's just a magnet. So we're gonna take it, stick it on, and you can get closer with this. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna push it against the wall, and you want it to sit right in the top of ring roof right between the ring groove at the top and the top of the cylinder box. So as you can see, it's centered right, here's the ring groove and here's the top of the cylinder and it's right in the center of that. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna push it right as far, as close as we can and get it zeroed on the little zero right down there. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. So it's zeroed. Okay, and then we're gonna get a mirror and put it in back here. And we're gonna spin this slowly around the cylinder and make sure that it's not going over about, you know, three to four thousandths over on the radius. Yeah, so when you see three, that would mean it's like a thousandth and a half out because we're going to be measuring radius. So we're going to go all the way around and we're going to use the mirror to look in back. And as we can see, we're at about three thousandths around the back. So we've got about a thousandth and a half. So this is, uh, this is okay to start boring with. Now we got to set up the actual boring cutting tool. 
All right, so basically what we have here is the actual cutting tool that you use on the boring bar. And then this is the device we use to set up the, the cutting tool on the boring bar. This is basically a micrometer. And this slides into a little insert hole here, like this, okay? And you're gonna set your, your gauge up to whatever you wanna do. So we'll take our stock bore, it's say it three thousandths, and we're going 20 thousandths over. So we'll put it three and 20 thousandths over, or whatever your bore is gonna be. Okay, so that's what this is going to be set up to you, your final board that you want to cut with. So you stick this, I can get it centered, so that looks good. Alright, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to stick this in the board, and it's kind of spring-loaded. It's going to go right in the middle. You stick it in there like this, and you push it all the way in, okay? And you let go of that, of the actual cutting tool. And now all you have to do is tighten the tool down with an Allen wrench. And that's where you, you stick the Allen in here and you tighten it down, you lock it in, and then you know that your cutting tool is in the precise spot for cutting. And then you can go ahead and start your cut. All right, now that we have the actual cutting tool set up and we have double checked all of our measurements to make sure it's on, we're gonna get this tool just right around the cylinder. So we'll get it just about to the top of the cylinder, like so, like that. Then we're gonna pull the wheel out so that now it's free spinning, so that's not gonna affect anything. We're gonna turn our boring machine on in the up position. And then we have our two levers here. Our top lever is gonna be our turning speed, and our bottom lever is gonna be our downward movement. So first we're gonna turn the bar on like that, pull this bar up, and then we'll sit here and make sure it's doing everything correctly. This is just a scratch cut, so we're at about five thousandths of an inch. And if anything were to go wrong, you just you have your hands here on the levers at full time the whole, the whole way through so that you could turn it off very quickly if need be. And we'll just stand here and watch the cut until it's done. One thing I forgot to mention about this um, is you need to set your stop point for the cutter. Because if you don't set the stop point, this thing's on a hydraulic machine, so it works. It goes down in the cylinder slowly, it does it by itself. So you need to set the actual stopper here. As you can see, there's a little little thing here that spins around, you can adjust it, and here's the stopper right there. So once it hits there, you know that it's gone all the way to the bottom of the cylinder. On all your motors, you're gonna need to set this up manually because you can basically take the cutter down past the cylinder wall and hit the uh, main bearing webs and stuff. So you need to make sure to set that before you start all your cuts. All right, now that we're getting to the bottom of the cut here, we have our hands ready, waiting to hear so that the cutter stops. You'll be able to hear it, that it stops cutting. Getting pretty close. Now that it's stopped, we're going to stop it from going down, stop the stopper with the speed, so the speed is stopped and it stopped going down. And now we're going to push this bar down so that the whole thing breaks up. And now we're uh, basically going to check the cylinder, get in here and just kind of look at it. See if there's any high spots. Now this was just a scratch cut, so this was at five thousandths. So our next step is basically going to take this tool again. We're going to set it to ten thousandths more. So we're going to have an extra ten thousandths cut in there, which will bring us to fifteen thousandths. And then after that, we'll check it with a dial bore gauge to make sure that it was accurate. And then the last five thousandths will be done on the cylinder humming machine. So that's uh, basically what you're going to have to do for these cylinders on the boring bar, and you do it for each cylinder. Yeah, right, and now this uh, yeah, this cut is set up for ten thousandths, so it's taking off a little more material. Once this cut is done, um, we'll move on to the next cylinder because this cylinder will be done. And that is all it takes to use a quickway boring bar. Brought to you by DIY Auto Tech. We'll see you next time.